Hello everyone and welcome to the creepy moments and easter eggs in non-horror games Iceberg Explained. Something that has always interested me is the creepy hidden secrets and moments that can be found in things that normally wouldn't be. From some of our favorite childhood movies and TV series to the video games we all grew up with, there's bound to be some hidden nightmare fuel in there somewhere, especially in games that are supposed to be made for kids. This iceberg will cover creepy moments, enemies, levels, and easter eggs in different video games. The video games are strictly non-horror though, as horror games are meant to be scary. So with that out of the way, let's start at the top. Sonic CD is kind of a dark game if you think about it. The whole premise is Sonic traveling through time to correct a timeline where the world was conquered and destroyed by Dr. Eggman. This is probably one of the darkest games in the Sonic side-scrolling collection. One of the creepiest moments in the game, though, actually comes after you've completed the game. Once you've completed the game, you can unlock the sound test room. This allows you to look at game music and look at artwork for the game. There's some genuinely interesting pieces of art and music in Sonic CD. But if you were to input FM number 46, PCM number 12, and DA number 25, and press start, you would be greeted with this image. This creepy Sonic stares back at you with the US version of the boss theme playing in the background. At the bottom of the screen in Japanese it says, Fun is Infinite, by Sega Enterprises. It also appears to be signed by Majin, or the devil in Japanese. The original idea was it was supposed to be Sonic with Mario's face, but instead it created this eldritch abomination and one of the creepiest easter eggs in a Sonic game. I'm not sure how this was supposed to be anything other than creepy, especially with the music choice. Super Mario 64 is probably the most popular 3D platformer of all time. It's easy to see why with how much there is to do, how well the game still controls, and how great the level design is. Even the world of Mario has some creepy elements hiding in the Mushroom Kingdom though. Super Mario 64 has one of the calmest water levels in all of video games. The music has this almost otherworldly calm to it. You can easily get lost in the level as you explore around sunken ships and dive into the depths. Once you're under the water, it's a little different of a story though. Mario makes his way around the underwater level pretty calmly until this thing shows up. This eel is sitting inside of a sunken ship when you first enter the level. His design is so creepy for not just a Mario game, but any child friendly game. He can also lunge at Mario at certain spots. The eel causes quite a bit of damage to Mario, which isn't great when you lose health underwater since you can't breathe. Which can lead to one of the most depressing deaths in a Mario game. Mario runs out of air, clutches at his throat, and then drowns in the water. His lifeless body will begin to float to the top. This and the eel make the water level one of the creepiest levels in Super Mario 64. The Sims is a popular life sim game, probably the most popular life sim game. In the game, you're able to make characters called Sims that can live whatever life you want for them. The game is pretty close to real life in many ways, and not so close in others. The Sims franchise has some creepy moments, from how dark and quiet the world gets at night, to the ghosts of the game, and for sure with all the strange glitches you can encounter. But some of the creepiest moments come early on in the series, in the form of the strange phone calls the Sims can receive. Sometimes your Sim will receive a phone call with a cryptic message. These usually don't mean anything, and they wouldn't really be creepy if this didn't play along with the ominous phone call. Some of the creepy messages can be, you have been chosen, they will come soon. Or, the drop off has been made, you have been warned. Or, my favorite, they're coming soon, maybe you should think twice about opening the door. These messages were prank calls, but they almost always sounded super ominous and creepy. They were especially so when you were playing the game at night, like I used to, all by myself. Reading these messages late at night could be a bit of a terrifying experience. 
Not only that, but the same creepy sound also plays when a burglar is stealing something from your sim's house. Dragon Age Origins is the first title in the Dragon Age series, a fantasy game series created by Bioware. The game has a high fantasy setting that makes for a dark but magical world for the players to explore. In Dragon Age, there exist these creatures known as Darkspawn. They are the main antagonists of the first game, with the game's story having you fight against the Blight. In your journey to get allies to fight against the Blight, you have to adventure into the Deep Roads to find the Paragon Braska. With the help of some maps, you will eventually enter the Dead Trenches. As you adventure through this area, you start to get the feeling that something isn't right about this place. Parts of the walls and floors are splotched with these fleshy cocoons. Then you begin to hear the voice of a woman. She appears to be recounting the events of the past days like she was a human journal. First day, they come and catch everyone. But it's only in bits and pieces. When you eventually come across the voice, you find a dwarven woman. She looks to have been corrupted by the darkspawn. And we hear the full recollection of the horrifying things that happened. Going further into the tag, we again hear her talking, where we learn the horrifying truth about how the darkspawn are birthed. With her muttering the name of the beast as we enter its lair, Broodmother. We are then greeted by what I personally think is still one of the most horrifying abominations in games, a twisted being that was once dwarven. And while the boss fight itself isn't too difficult, the buildup and the knowledge of what it is make this one of the darkest encounters in the franchise. Super Mario 64 once again ends up on this iceberg. To be fair, Mario 64 has a lot of creepy moments hidden within its colorful world. This time we'll be looking at Big Boo's Haunt, which is the spooky level in the game. Now let me start by saying this level is overall very creepy. The music has this creepy drone going on the whole time, the sky is dark, and the building is dark and creepy. Overall, it's a very creepy horror themed level. The biggest scares to most people usually are the giant eyeball, the carousel room, and the piano that jump scared every kid playing this game growing up. Big Boo's Haunt had a piece of nightmare fuel for everyone. Minecraft is an indie game that has taken the world by storm. It's become as recognizable as other top video games since its release. It's also very popular with children. Minecraft is a peaceful game where your imagination is the limit. You can build, explore, and craft as you see fit. Minecraft does have a bit of a dark side though, as you'll hear with the cave sounds. There exist 19 different cave ambient sound clips that can play while you explore the caves. The sounds are very dark, eerie, and ominous sounding. They are meant to put the player on edge, but they could do a little more than that. Here are some of the cave sounds you can hear. The cave sounds are extra creepy if you weren't expecting them, especially if you were playing late at night. The cheery world and disposition of the rest of the game doesn't match how creepy the cave sounds are, and considering how many people do play Minecraft to relax, these can definitely have the opposite effect. If you really want a chilling experience, play Minecraft alone at night with a pair of decent headphones on and the volume turned up. It may be a game popular with children, but even in the right atmosphere, the game can be very creepy. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time has quite a few creepy moments, enemies, and areas that Link has to travel through. The first one I want to mention are the Redeads. These zombie creatures exist in the graveyard, the Shadow Temple, and Hyrule Town after Ganon has taken over the castle. 
you first encounter one when you go to learn the Sun Song. You have to enter the graveyard in Kakarika Village. Once there, you play Zelda's lullaby, and the Zelda family crypt opens up for you. Link enters the crypt and is met with these things. They are the Reeds, and if you get too close to them, they'll scream at you, which stuns Link. If Link is unable to move before the stun wears off, then they will jump on his back and try to strangle him to death. The Reeds would make more appearances in other Zelda games, but they were never quite as frightening as they were in their first appearance. Earthbound is a game series that Nintendo seems to have forgotten for the most part. Earthbound stars Ness as he goes on an adventure with his friends in a modern setting. The game uses all sorts of allusions to real world locations, groups, and real world issues. Earthbound also has one of the creepiest final bosses in any game from that generation. At the end of Earthbound, once you've completed your quest, you'll run into the final boss. This grotesque looking monster is called Gygus, and he is by far the biggest tone shift of a fight in this game. One moment everything is happy and cheery, and then you're fighting this abomination. There are many theories surrounding what exactly Gygus is and what purpose he serves, aside from being a creepy final boss. The most widely accepted one is that Gygus represents loss of innocence, as in Ness losing that childhood innocence we all once held. Regardless of whether he is meant to represent anything or not, Gygus is still a terrifying boss that really didn't need to be in such a cheerful kids game. Mass Effect 3 marks the end of the trilogy of Shepard's journey to stop the Reapers. The Reapers being these universe-ending creatures, bent on doing as their name suggests. A little ways into the game, Shepard is given a mission to go to an Asari outpost that acted as a safe haven for Asaris that were cursed with the potential to become Ardat Yachis, a condition that leads to the death of anyone the Asari mates with. As Shepard arrives, the Reapers are using their advanced technology to corrupt and mutate the Asari into these tall, grotesque creatures known as Banshees. The Banshees alert you to their presence with a scream. They are incredibly powerful biologic monsters that can kill the player instantly. If their looks weren't enough to frighten you, their overwhelming presence in a fight just might. The Banshees are probably the creepiest looking enemies in the game, and the story of how they are created is just as disturbing. In Lumio City in Pokemon X and Y, if you enter a certain building, you could see a ghost. Once the player enters the building, the game stops for a moment and a ghost girl floats in behind the player. She then floats around the player before stopping and saying, No, you're not the one. She then disappears. If you look around the room, you won't find a single trace of her. She appears and then is gone just as fast. This isn't the only instance of the ghost girl, though. If you go to a separate building or on the same part of town, you can find her in one of the rooms. If you talk to her, this is what she says. Don't talk to me. If you do, I won't hear the elevator. The story behind the X and Y ghost girl still doesn't have a conclusive ending. She never got a backstory and will probably never know what she wants or who she is looking for. GTA 5 is the latest GTA game from Rockstar Studios. Rockstar is one of the most famous companies for hiding creepy easter eggs in their games, and you'll be seeing a lot of them on this iceberg. This goes for GTA 5 as well. If you go to the top of Mount Gordo at night, you can get a glimpse of something otherworldly. At the top of the mountain, a ghost can be seen floating. In order to find her, it has to be exactly between 11pm and midnight. The ghost is a girl in a white dress with dark hair. If you try to approach her, she'll disappear, so you need to keep your distance. The woman is actually the ghost of Jolene Cranley Evans, the dead wife of Jock Cranley. She was murdered by Jock, but there wasn't enough evidence to prove that he did it, so he still walks freely. Under her floating body, you can see the words Jock written in blood. This, plus the article you can find on the internet in the game, prove that he murdered her. Her ghost is now unable to find any peace in the afterlife.
There are many reasons for the Shadow Temple to be considered one of the creepiest dungeons in a kid's game. The music and the temple boss, Bongo Bongo, who is a pair of floating hands and heads, are a good place to start. But the main reason for its infamy would be Dead Hands. Dead Hands is the mini boss of the Shadow Temple, and the creature that you have to beat to get the Lens of Truth. When you enter its lair, all you see is stark white hands sticking out of the ground. Walking towards one of the arms, it will grab you by the head when you get too close. And this is when the true terror begins, as once you are grabbed, a pale white abomination with red and black splotches on its skin will come out of the ground and start to slowly shuffle towards you while you struggle to break free. Once close enough, it will bring its unnaturally long neck down to come face to face with you. It's not the hardest boss fight in the game, but there's just something incredibly unnerving about having this thing in a game designed for all ages. Banjo Kazooie is a classic 3D platformer for the N64. The game was very child friendly and many did play it as children. The game was by no means terrifying, but there were a few moments that would scare young players. One of these was the first encounter with Clinker. Clinker is a giant metallic shark that, on first glance, looks pretty terrifying. You first encounter Clinker after exiting a tunnel underwater. You were immediately met with a row of sharp metal teeth, staring back at you as you exit the tunnel. The big metal shark is floating in the water and staring at you. As a young child, this could be terrifying and definitely kickstart anyone's galeophobia or fear of sharks. Clicker isn't a threat to the player, but the first encounter definitely scared a few who didn't see it coming. Dreams. They can honestly be about anything. Even the prototype of another game, like in Metal Gear Solid 3, where if you save after the torture scene, then turn your game off and on, instead of being greeted by Snake, you will get this. A weirdly creepy black and white hack and slash game, where you play as a guy with two hooks, fighting zombies. There isn't any music here, just a sound of wind blowing and you fighting. Towards the end of this sequence, your character will transform into a monster, or Snake wakes up from his dream. If this happened to me as a kid, I would have freaked the hell out, and probably thrown the game away. Pokemon is known as a very family-friendly franchise. It actually got started way back in 96 in Japan and later in 98 in the US. The game has become world-renowned and still boasts incredible sales numbers with each release. Even though the Pokemon games are made for children to be able to play them, the games still have creepy moments and easter eggs littered throughout their franchise. And it all started with the first games. Lavender Town was an area in Pokemon that caused quite a lot of distress for many players. The town is set up to have this creepy vibe that you don't get anywhere else in the first game. The music is creepy and the town has a Pokemon graveyard and some of the people you meet in town say some really creepy things. Lavender Town would even get its own creepypasta, which if you want to hear more about, you can watch my gaming creepypasta iceberg. Lavender Town was only the start to the creepy moments and easter eggs that Pokemon would have hidden in their games. The Dunwich Ruins in Fallout 3 are a rather unsettling location in the game. When you enter the ruins, you will find the hall tapes of a man named Jamie, chronicling his journey to find his runaway father, who went crazy after getting some mysterious book, a man on a journey not too different from yours. Exploring these ruins, you will experience strange happenings, doors closing and opening on their own, a random head on a table, and when you get to the second part of the ruins, you start to have hallucinations. Eventually, you'll come upon a collapsed area of the building, and Jamie's last holotape, who is now ghoulified. The tape is mostly nonsense, but in it, Jamie mentions Abdul Alazard, the writer of the Necronomicon in the HP Lovecraft stories. When you get to the basement of the ruins, you will find Jamie worshipping some twisted obelisk adorned with human bones.
Super Mario Galaxy 2 is the sequel to the very successful Super Mario Galaxy. The two games were released for Nintendo's fifth console, the Nintendo Wii. As you play through the game, eventually you'll make it to World 5, Shiverburn Galaxy. The level has lava that you must avoid and move from platform to platform, but if you were to take a moment and take in your surroundings, you might notice something if you were to look up. Tall silhouetted figures will loom just over the cliff's edge. They appear to be staring down at Mario with their hollow eyes. These figures are known as Hell Valley Sky Trees. Their existence is a mystery as they don't really serve a purpose. The name Hell Valley Sky Trees comes from their names in the files of Super Mario Galaxy 2. Shiverburn Galaxy was named beyond Hell Valley internally, and the figures were labeled as Hell Valley Sky Trees. They would even go on to get their own creepypasta, which definitely helped spread the word of these mysterious figures. No explanation has ever been given by Nintendo, which just adds more to their mystery. Batman Arkham Asylum is the first game in the Batman Arkham series, a series that is mostly about beating up various Batman villains, though occasionally they deviate from this concept, like when you explore the morgue. When you enter the room leading to the morgue, you are greeted by a cutscene of Batman looking through a glass while patients are freaking out on the other side. One even bangs against the glass, begging you to help them. As you make your way through the area, you find a dead Commissioner Gordon. Batman tries to contact his daughter, but the lion's dead. By this point, Batman's eyes have turned red. As you go further, the screen starts to blur a little bit, and there are hundreds of bugs skittering across the ground. When you enter the actual morgue, you start to hear voices, and the storage doors are opening and closing at a constant rate. Heading to the center, you find the dead bodies of Batman's mother and father, reanimated, taunting him. Then you hear Joker's maniacal laughing before a giant scarecrow appears. This scene shows the true darkness that the Batman universe can contain. In the game where you get to play as Batman, you also get to experience the trauma that made him into who he was. The town of Tumbleweed is a ghost town that can be found in Red Dead Redemption 1. The town has been abandoned, save for some bandits hiding around the place. Clearing out those bandits, you'll have an entirely empty town to explore. The town has such a creepy feeling to it. Players are reported if you walk around the town at night, you can hear strange noises in the buildings. In the mansion that you can explore, people say they can hear people crying and dogs barking, even though there are no dogs or people anywhere around. Every other building is abandoned but can be explored. You can explore the old saloon and find that it is in complete disrepair. If you keep looking around, you'll find a church. Inside the church, you'll find words written on the pulpit that say, the devil has gotten into that beast. Turning your camera slightly, you'll see a blurry vision of a demonic face. Psychonauts is a platformer all about exploring the minds of different people, and all that comes with exploring such things. For the most part, they are pretty zany and fun, but as comes with exploring such a thing as someone's mind, inevitably you will come across something disturbing. In this case, a memory in the mind of the ever-kind Mila Vodillo. In her mind, you will come across a memory of hers from when she was a caretaker at an orphanage. One day, when she was out getting groceries, the orphanage was set on fire and all the children died. While it was happening, she could see and hear their screams through a psychic vision or something. It's pretty vague. If you enter the chest next to the memory, you will be brought to a room of Mila's nightmare, which appears to be shadowy figures representing the dead children, begging Mila to help them and blaming her for their death. Pretty disturbing stuff. Room, 
In Red Dead Redemption 2, you can come across many creepy interactions without meaning to. While riding through the blue water marsh at night, you can stumble upon a woman crying or yelling at seemingly nothing. This woman has become known as La Llorona, as she is crying and is always wearing white. Sometimes you will only hear her cries, but if you continue to come back, she will manifest. The player can encounter La Llorona 16 times. During these 16 encounters, the player will hear La Llorona tell her story. Although you will have to piece the story together yourself since she tells each part out of order. Essentially, La Llorona was in love with a married man who ended up deciding he'd rather be with his wife after finding out La Llorona was pregnant with his child. La Llorona is understandably upset as now no other man will want to be with her. The player can hear her being angry with the man, but then also she is heard asking for him to come back. La Llorona's father ends up getting involved once La Llorona abandoned her son to try to get back together with the man. Ultimately, Agnes Dowd's father kills the man that she loved. It is implied on her tombstone that she had a mental breakdown and killed her father and herself. During the last encounter with La Llorona, she will sort of recognize the fact that the player has been listening to her story and invites the player to see the tree where she hung herself. In Diamond City, you can get a mission called A Devil's Due from one of the random guards. This mission has you go explore the Museum of Witchcraft. Upon arrival at the museum, you will find that the front door is barred. Exploring the outside of the museum, you will find the torn apart body of Private Hart. Next to him, you will find the basement entrance into the museum. When you enter the museum, things are eerily quiet as you make your way through the basement, until about halfway a body drops from the room above and the building starts to shake. Continuing, you pass by some creepy mannequins, one of which is hanging. When you get to the ground floor, you are greeted by a massive death claw stalking the area. Sneaking around makes you feel like the victim of a horror movie, where one wrong move means instant death. Fable 2 is a fantasy series created on the Xbox family of consoles. The games are pretty silly, but also serious at the same time. As you travel the world of Fable 2, you'll come across these giant doors that talk to you. These are known as demon doors, and they act as guards for valuable items in secret areas. Each demon door is a special way of opening it. The particular demon door we're looking at requires you to play a song for it. The player can pull out a loot and play a short song for the door. Once that is complete, it will open up and the player may enter. Once inside, you'll see a snowy landscape and a quaint path that leads up to a serene looking cottage. The warm glow of the building can be seen from the window and open doorway, as if a cozy fire awaits you. Once you enter the building, a loud noise will pull you from that world instantly. Everything around you has changed. The serene cottage now looks like a torture chamber. Across the room is an iron maiden, wood stalks to the side, and skeletons litter the floor. You can see blood against the hardwood floor and the rest of the building looks to be rotting from the inside out. The windows are now all boarded up and the ceiling appears to be missing in some places. This is Winter Lodge and it is likely you won't be coming back. Walking around Rapture in Bioshock is one of the most unnerving things in video games. It's a very lonely experience, with no one except for the splicers to keep you company. And I think that's what makes this scene so creepy. As you're exploring Rapture, you will come across a dentist office. Entering the office, at first it is empty, then steam fills the room, and when it dissipates, there's a body in the chair. Walking around to the corner, you will find a power-up. When you grab it, more steam fills the room before again dissipating. Turning around, there's now a bloody dentist splicer behind you, scaring the ever-living hell out of you. The 
Majora's Mask has so many creepy moments, encounters, and themes that it's hard to simply put just a single moment on here. Majora's Mask is a direct sequel to Ocarina of Time, which has had its own set of creepy moments. Somehow, Majora's Mask decided that it wanted even more of those. The game has this end of the world feeling, as you must complete it within three days or the moon will come crashing into Clock Town. If this happens, the game ends and a cutscene showing the devastation can be seen. This is probably the darkest a Zelda game has ever gotten to date, but there's so much more than just this moment. There are aliens in the game that will abduct a woman if you don't help her. There's a creepy hand that comes out of a toilet. There's even a zombie man who you can save using the Song of Healing. This game is filled with moments and characters that are incredibly dark for any children's game. Of course, there's also the happy mask salesman, who's probably the most terrifying but iconic part of Majora's Mask. He is creepy and foreboding, like he is more than just a mask salesman. Finally, of course, there's the Link Elegy that you can summon. This thing is so creepy looking. And I guess lots of other players thought so too, as it appears in the Ben Drowned creepypasta quite a bit. Majora's Mask moments could take up an entire section of this iceberg to themselves. There's something very ominous about traversing desolate towns in video games, walking through areas that should be bustling with people. Ravenholm and Half-Life is such a town, especially when right before you are told nobody talks about Ravenholm. As you enter Ravenholm, unsettling music starts to play. As you adventure into the actual town, you'll find bodies torn apart with some hanging from trees, and to add to the unsettling nature of this town, aside from the occasional dialogue from Father G, the only noise you will get throughout this part is the music and the screams of the waves of zombies you have to fight through. The place gets even creepier when you find out exactly why people don't talk about Ravenholm. Hitman is a stealth game series all about killing people as quietly as possible. It's not really the kind of game franchise you expect to find anything supernatural in. That is, unless you go into Room 106 and Hitman Contracts, during the mission Traditions of the Trade. During said mission, you will be given the contract to assassinate Franz Fuchs in this hotel. If you make a detour through a locked door, you'll wind up in front of a room with some yellow tape torn off. Room 106. When you enter the room, everything goes quiet. Entering the bathroom, if you stare into the mirror, there will be a ghost waving at you from inside the bathtub. Stare at it too long, and it disappears. Not the creepiest ghost, but it makes you wonder why he's there. After all, the room did have yellow tape torn off of it. Lemmings is a puzzle video game where you control these little characters known as lemmings. You have to guide them from one part of the level to the next, saving as many as you can. The game was a pretty standard family-friendly affair. That was until you got to level 14, known as Menacing. The background is a black void, the ceiling has blood oozing from it, the remains of some demonic creatures litter the floor that you must traverse. It's such an odd level choice in a pretty cutesy family friendly game. It looks like something that would be right at home in a game like Doom or any of the early PC era FPS games. It definitely doesn't match the rest of the level design in the game so far. Hard to imagine a game like Lemmings would have such a creepy world, but as you'll see on the rest of this iceberg, more games have something darker hidden just beneath their child-friendly surface. On the outside, Pokemon is a cutesy fun made for kids JRPG. But, when you start to delve into the lore, you start to discover that maybe these games aren't as cute as you thought. For instance, the Pokedex entries, which can be downright terrifying. Pokemon like Gengar, whose entry in Moon goes like this. It apparently wishes for a traveling companion, since it was once human itself. It tries to create one by taking the lives of other humans. Or Beware, whose entry says this. This Pokemon has a habit of hugging its companions. Many trainers have left this world after their spines were crushed by its hug. Maybe you should think twice before you say you'd love to live in the world of Pokemon.
The capital wasteland is full of disturbing things, from slavery to vampires, but none are more personally disturbing to me than Andale. On the outside, Andale seems like a normal place. Well, as normal as you can get in a nuclear wasteland. They even have some children running around. That is, until you talk to the old man that lives there, and he warns you to get out while you can. Exploring the small area, you will find a locked shed and basement with 100 skill checks. Weird for some random rooms. Breaking into either one, you'll be greeted by the same disturbing sight. Bodies locked in cages, rippers on the table with blood everywhere, and some mysterious meat stored in the fridge. The people here are cannibals, and they have been for generations. As you figure out when talking to the old man after killing them. But it gets even worse, as when you talk to the children, you also learn that they're inbred, forced into incestuous relationships. Disturbing, right? Portal is a game series that hardly needs an introduction. There are a series of puzzle platformer games where you use a portal gun to solve puzzles. The game stars Chell, a girl who is awoken from her relaxation chamber, in order to be the next test subject for GLaDOS. GLaDOS is an evil AI that has killed the scientists that worked at the lab, and now holds a large group of people hostage as their test subjects, which includes Chell. As you progress through the game, you'll notice these tiny areas carved out around the different test chambers. These are known as Ratman Dens, and there are places of refuge for the last remaining scientists not to be killed by GLaDOS. Doug Ratman is a character that secretly set the whole game into motion by putting Chell's name at the top of the testing list. He also provides her with clues and cryptic messages on how to escape the facility. The areas are pretty creepy though. Ratman was suffering from a form of psychological break, as you can see in the drawings in each of the Ratman dens. He would draw things that didn't really make sense and even cut out pictures of the companion cube to place onto real pictures of people. In Portal 2, you can softly hear the audio of Doug Ratman as he speaks in a cryptic and creepy manner. The Ratman dens aren't the only creepy things in Portal, but if you want to know more, I did a whole video covering the creepy stuff hidden in Portal in another video on the channel. Give it a watch if you're interested. <laughs> 